Hey everybody, it's review time again. Today it is a Flash Forge, uh, I think it's called Photo 8.9 inch, which 8.9 inch, you know how big the screen is now. Uh, let's get the plastic cover off. Different color than any of the other ones I have. Not that it plots UV light better, but darker feels to me like it would, even though I know that's not true. Uh, it's a heavy, solid, one-piece cover. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. Power supply in the box with a standard type plug, which is what I like. Easier to plug into my power strip. A plastic scraper and a metal scraper. Gloves, extra screws, and some Allen wrenches. Instructions, build plate. Right, let's look at the build plate first while we're here. Uh, four screw leveling system, which I like. Handles on it, which I also like, as you guys know. Uh, not very sloped, though. I mean, it's sloped and it's curved. So, but the angle is not as steep as I would like to see to let resin run off. So, and, and of course, the middle section is going to trap some resin. And it's got the four screws right there also. So, it's a little bit of paint to clean. Not, not, that, not that big a deal. But I do wish, in general, the rest of the build plate was a little more sloped. Uh finish is rough. It's not pre-sanded, but it's it's shaped rough. The surface of it is rough and grainy. Uh, well, grainy might not be the word. It's textured. Uh, it's not going to damage your FEP when it goes in, but I definitely feel like things, you're going to get very good adhesion out of this build plate, but we'll see when I test it. But I do like, I like that surface. Uh, does not bother me, but there are four very small holes here corresponding to uh, where the screw's going on top. I don't, to me, I don't think that'll make any difference. I know some people say it's like extra cleaning you have to do if, if any uh, resin gets cured in there, but unless, we'll see how that works too. I'm gonna print, since it's right in the middle of the build plate, I'm gonna be printing right on those holes, so we'll see if that matters at all. Build plate is a very solid, heavy piece of metal. Okay, it's a build plate. Like I said, wish it was a little more sloped. Other than that, it's fine. Uh, the machine itself, oh, it's pretty heavy. This is this is very. This feels incredibly solid. Yeah, that's that's got some heft to it. Uh, it's got dual guides here, which are very solid. You can see the thickness. This is one metal piece. This arm, and you can probably see how thick it is. That is not, you're definitely not getting any flex out of that thing. Uh, and the way the build plate attaches looks good. Let's see the vat. Okay, the vat has the handles, which you, I know I always tell manufacturers, please put handles. You know, the bigger the printers get, the more we need handles. This has handles, so I like it. And I don't think there's anything on the bottom of that, so I'm not going to put it down just yet. The inside has a covering that I can get off. I'll just put upside down for now. Oh, this is also good. So not only does it have handles, it's got screws, four screws that uh, protrude past the rest of the build plate. So I can safely put it down without worrying about my FEP. Okay, so Flash Forge, I don't know, I'm not going to try to take credit for my reviews where I always tell manufacturers, put little legs you know, because Saturn did it first, but then no one else did it. But Flash Forge uh, did it, and I love it. So I can put my vat down safe without worrying about scratching my FEP. Then those same four screws going down actually fit into four holes right on the, right on the, by the uh, screen. So you can, when you want to go to put it in place, you, uh, you can't miss. Locks in perfectly. Then you... Screw it down. So, in terms of construction so far, I am absolutely loving. They put what I like to see. Extremely solid Z. Extremely solid arm. That with actual feet and handles. And, oh, they even have the max fill line on here. As well, I don't know if you can see that, but they've got a max fill line in there. So this vat to me is just about perfect. Handles, 
legs, max fill line. That's just simple stuff, but hey, any other manufacturers watching this video, this is simple, but this is what you need to do. It's very simple stuff. Handles, feet, max fill line, really easy. Nice uh, metal construction. The screen comes uh, pre-taped, which is nice, which I think basically all of them do these days anyway. Um, the USB is on the side here and power's in the back. I guess that's about it for construction. So what we're going to do next, I love the feet. What we're going to, what we're going to do next is I'm going to bring the light source test in right now so we can see how this light source is. I can't comment on it on the second because I don't know how it's going to come out. And then we will, uh, you know, do a bunch of test prints and come back with my impressions. And that's it. So stick with me for just a few minutes while we see how FlashForge's entry into the midsize printer uh, arena works. And that's it. See you, in a, see you, well, see you guys in a second, actually. Thanks. Okay, so I've done my testing. And before I get into uh, showing you these prints, I want to talk about two things I talked about during the post-unboxing section, which I need to talk about before I forget about. One, the slope on the build plate, which I said I didn't think was steep enough for the resin to run off. Actually, the resin ran off really nicely. I was actually surprised because, as I showed you in the earlier part, the slope on the build plate wasn't that great, but the resin all dripped off. So forget that thing that I probably sounded a little negative. It was fine. Number two, I printed flat on the build plate. Those four holes in the middle actually, and I'll show the high-res photo, did show up on the flat part, four little dots. So that would require some sanding. I mean, normally when I print the base flat on the build plate because I do some extra material to compensate for the elephant's foot, I would normally give it a little sanding anyway. But just a heads up, because of those four little holes in that build plate, anything you print flat to the plate, flat to the plate will have little dots. And uh, it won't matter if you're using supports because if it's under your support material, you won't care, right? The other thing is in the light test, you, you saw it look like a little bit of gridding in the light test. To me, that's an acceptable amount of gridding um, on any parallel light source. Uh, it doesn't have to be 100% like absolutely perfectly uniform. And one of the ways to test that is when you print flat on the plate, are there any lines? And there are no noticeable lines, no showing of gridding on the actual print, which means the light source is actually fairly uniform. Otherwise, I would see some kind of gridding or lines on things printed flat, especially. So that part is good. Um, the last thing that I talked about, I kind of joked about the cover being dark. Now I actually don't like that. I, I, so far, everything on the machine I've really liked in terms of the way they built it, constructed it, the materials they used, everything. But that dark cover, now this might just be a pet peeve for me, I couldn't see through it. So even though I know my print was working, I kind of like to look through you know, the more orangey plastic covers you know, every now and then and see, you know, half my model coming out of the resin. I just like that, even though you could know a fail pretty quickly anyway, but I didn't like not being able to see into my printer. I, I just didn't. So flash forwards, uh, if you're watching this video, you might want to switch to the kind of cover that everyone else uses in terms of uh, a little bit more translucent uh, for vision. It doesn't have to let UV light through. I mean, those other plastic covers that everyone else makes that are see-through, I have them in a room where sun comes in, a pretty decent amount of, of ambient sunlight comes in, and it's never been an issue on any of 20 printers with those type of covers. So please lighten uh, the color of your cover so we can see through it, because that, that actually did bother me a little bit, much, much to my surprise. So I didn't want to forget to say that. Now let's talk about the important thing. How did it print? Now I tested with uh, water washable resin because, oh, full disclosure, uh, I was sent this printer to test, not by FlashForge, believe it or not, at, which I didn't even realize at first. I thought FlashForge had emailed me and sent me the, prizer, the printer. It was actually SaneSmart, which is just a FlashForge reseller, which I found to be a little odd. Um, because you could buy the flash forge not from them, but from someone else. But anyway, uh, so they sent it to me to test. Uh, it doesn't influence my review at all, but I did want to disclose it. The other thing they sent to me was uh, Ministry of Resin, MOR, more water washable resin. And although I have liked water washable resins in the past, these days I don't really use them much because they don't stack up to like my EPAX hard or that Soraya Navy gray. 
And this resin, I have to say, it printed really well. It holds great detail, but still not quite up to the snuff of the uh, Epax Hard of the Saray Navy Cray. I guess I should make a review video just about this resin since they sent that also and I'm using it. Um, but what I will say is that this 4K large screen printer printed out all the details. Everything came out nice and sharp and clear. Looks really good. Even in the small figures I printed, uh, I did two versions of the Dragonborn just to, just to test different spots of the printer. They both came out basically exactly the same as far as I can tell. Uh, I did the crossbow slinger as well. So we look at those high ref photos, you can judge for yourself. I mean, it's not gonna have, doesn't have the same resolution obviously as like the Sonic Mini 4K, but it is more than acceptable if you wanna do tabletop quality minis for your games. I mean, there's a 4K uh, screen at 8.9 inches, so it's, it's giving you, you know, around the, the 0.5 OUM for resolution, so that's great. Um, and like I said, you know, I wanted to put it to the test I want to print some small stuff for you, but I also want to print some bigger, heavier pieces. Even though they are hollowed, there's these are you know some, some fairly big pieces. I filled the plate up with it, and uh, it, it did admirably. So, in terms of print quality, excellent. Build quality, excellent. As always, the one thing that I lament in these videos that I can't do for you is I can't tell you how does this printer hold up for six months. You know. Um, you know, and people say, well, why don't you come back and do a roundup, you know, six months, a year later. By the time I do that, there's a whole new generation of printers out. So I'm not sure that would even make a difference. Although maybe I could do that one day. But aside from that, I like this printer. Uh, I have to find out the price as I'm making this. I don't even know what the price is to be dead honest. So I'm going to insert it here. Hopefully it's a reasonable price. Flashforge, I actually, you know, I realized I never reviewed anything from Flashforge before. And I looked them up and I realized why. They they seem to make higher end printers and all their products that I found when I looked were all in the couple thousand dollar range, which is why I don't really know FlashForge because I I don't spend a couple thousand dollars on any of my on my machines. So they, they, they seem to be a higher end manufacturer. And this looks like their first foray into the, what I call affordable printer realm. And I have to say, I'm, I'm impressed with what they did. The like I said before, like the construction, the machine's really solid. The, you know, everything's well thought out. Even though it's little stuff, a lot of printers that are made don't have all the little bells and whistles they should have, and this did. Um, print it great, very good adhesion, uh, and 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 this is with a resin that, you know, wouldn't be my resin of choice anyway that I tested, and and stuff still came out good. So I'm I'm very impressed with the printer. Uh, is it, you know, it's. Is it like better than my Elegoo Saturn? I wouldn't say it's any better. It's definitely not worse though. I mean, basically I'd say it prints the same quality as my Elegoo Saturn. I, I mean, I think I always think it's nice when you get a print like this, which is good solid entry, it's just more competition, which is a good thing because some people might have trouble getting something like the Saturn. I know they seem to always be sold out. I keep reading online. You know, I'm not looking to buy another one, but I see people posting that they're having trouble finding Saturns and whatnot. So if you can't, maybe something like this FlashForge might be a viable alternative if where you are, you can get it for a reasonable price, including shipping. Because print's great, construction as far as I can tell is great. Again, I can't tell you about longevity and durability, but it, it at least feels very heavy, very heavy, very solid, very well made. So hopefully that's true. Hopefully FlashForge, you know, being a, a higher end type manufacturer, you know, hopefully all that, that, that holds true in the long run. So that, that's about it for the review. Um, I'll make sure the price is in here. And I, you know, seeing as it was a, a reseller who contacted me, I'd ask them for a, a coupon for you guys in case anyone was interested. I am waiting to hear back if I can get a coupon for you guys. It won't be an affiliate link. It won't be anything I make money off of. I'm just trying to get you guys a discount in case you want this printer. Um, and just so everyone knows, I have now, I will not even use affiliate links anymore from anyone for anything because I want to maintain 100% independence on this channel. So, you know, I won't even do so, something so simple as an affiliate link anymore because I don't want to make even $1 off you guys buying a product because if I do, you know, I know the perception out there, YouTubers is, anyone who makes videos is trying to make money off like selling the product. I don't want to be viewed that way. I want to do honest reviews always. And I, you know, a lot of companies have approached me and asked me to, 
to affiliate with them or, or be sponsored by them or whatever you want to call it. And I've turned everyone down, just so you know. I will I will never do it to you guys. I want to be 100% independent always, 100% honest. Even a company I love like Epax, for instance, if they put out a crappy product, I need to be able to tell you that it's a crappy product. So I can't, I just can't affiliate with anyone. So just so you know. So when I place the link, if, if they give me one, I will place a link here to buy where you can buy this printer. Um, but it will not be something I make money off of, I promise you. Uh, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed the review. I have um, a review of the longer, longer came out with a Kickstarter and came out with a small 4K printer. So this should be competition for the Sonic Mini 4K and for the Epax um, X1 4K. So it's good to see more and more people entering the small 4K screen realm. So, that, you know, even though I love my Sonic Mini 4Ks, I also love competition. And I know in the end, it's going to be better for us as consumers, the more competition there is. So look for that review. I, the unboxing is done uh, by my wife already. Uh, I'm going to start my testing on that printer really soon. So hopefully in the next few days, uh, I'll have that review up as well. That's it. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps you guys in some way. And happy 3D printing, everyone.